G'day Minecrafters and how you going? Steve Oak here with another video and today I was hoping to make a simple tutorial for you guys for command blocks uh, and transmitting signal over for for redstone uh, over distances uh, so today I wanted to, I've made this little uh, little pad here, it's a little bit cluttered uh, so I'll get back a little bit uh, these, this here and here are exactly the same, one's just submerged I just wanted to make the command blocks easy to view and to show you that it is possible to hide it fairly easily. Um, the, this here and here, this here, here and here, these here, here and here, um, are all connected and based on the same variables. And um, I'm going to explain everything hopefully as I go. Now this here is a, regarding that clock over there, which we'll get into as well. So first of all, uh, there are two. There is one thing I wanted wanted to introduce you to. The first thing is objectives. Now, to add an objective, what you would first do is scoreboard add. Sorry, scoreboard objectives. <sighs> add and then let's say, I don't know, Fred, and then call make it a dummy. Objective. Now, what we what we can do if we type if we press enter is create an objective known as Fred. Now, what Fred doesn't have any particular meaning or value or anything like that. We could call it uh, stuff if we wanted to. It doesn't really matter. If we make an objective, um, we can then work with it and make redstone circuitry and stuff with it. Now, I've made a, a an objective known as demo for the sake of this tutorial. Uh, so if I press enter it won't work because it already exists. And what demo is, uh, well, what it will, will be, is our main variable in setting the values along these through here as well as incrementing it um, and transmitting a signal onto this screen. So let me get into the basics first of all. Um, when we, ha If we wanted to, for example, uh, add or change up the value of of our demo. We can do it by pressing that button. Now, what what will just happen there was we have uh, we have to type in a few things into the thing, but we've just incremented demo by one each time um, because demo comes in as a, a default uh, with a default value of zero um, when we create it. So when we press um, when we type in a scoreboard players add at a means for all players. Demo one. This is this end part here is the only part that changes. Everything else here uh, is relatively the same. Scoreboard players add. So we're just adding a variable to uh, demo, and we're adding one one number each time. We can change that to two. So like for example, if we press this button, it'll go to two straight away. Next time we'll go to four, then six, then eight. Uh, we can go minus one. I don't know if that will work. No, it doesn't. <laughs> I have to think it has to be remove. So we can do remove one. Remove one. We can do... Actually, if we press remove one again, it will go back to zero. But, yeah. So, add. We can also do set. So we can set it to one. So it goes to one. We can set it to three. Actually, let's go end go to 3, so we press it, goes to 3, we can set it to 2, you know, there's different things we can do, we've just, we can play with this variable now that we have it. Uh, so demo, we'll put it back to add, because I've got other things that have set, uh, let's add one, 1 each time. So let's set it back to 1, this is set to 1, this is set to 2, and this is set to 3, that's what those are as you can see here. Scoreboard players set at a demo 3, demo 2 and demo 1, and then this one is just demo 0. Rather than just being a simple reset objectives, I want it to go to, to demo set 0. Now, we'll, I'll explain why I do that later on, but first of all, I just want you to realize that you can quite easily increment with the add function, or you can set it to a particular variable, or so forth and I haven't showed you any test fours or any conditionals. Now let's add a conditional to the mix. Now a conditional basically means um, this will only happen if something else is true. So let's let's uh, set a, let's put add a variable. So we do, to add a variable we need to have um, another objective. Actually let's do that real quick. 
So we go to add another objective, the same way as before. Scoreboard objectives add demo. Um, I've, I've already got another one known as demo clock. Now what demo clock does um, is it te it has a variable of one or zero. One means it's on, zero means it's off. And I've already set, I've already created this objective, as you can see, and it's set from here, one and zero. And as you, this clock over here is my demo clock. The demo clock will only work if it has a variable of one, as I'll show you here. So the clock is now working. And what we've done here is we've done a test for, which I'll explain more about later. Uh, score demo clock one, score demo clock minimum of one. So only when demo clock has a, an output of one will this work, this clock here. If I set this back to zero, it won't work anymore. So if we were to, for example, come to this one and right up, right after the at a with no spaces, um, add a variable. So we go score without the o, the zero. It's let's move that out of the way. Score underscore uh, demo clock equals 1. So basically when, this is a conditional, so when demo clock is 1 or score demo clock minimum is 1. So when demo clock has a, a score of 1, uh, demo will be added. So right now, this is not working. As you can see, that's still on 1. But if we turn on that clock over there, straight away, we can increment this. We can go back to that as well. We can we can increment it again. If we set this back to zero, put this back on one, this suddenly no longer works because we've added a conditional to it. So when only when uh, demo clock is one, this clock here will work. Let's go home. So right after the at symbol is when you do it without any spaces, and then after that you have your your variable and what you want it to do. So that is a conditional. So only when those conditions are met is when it happens. Now the conditional is to lead you into the test for command. So let me just let me just do something. Let's get a uh, actually you know what? Let's let's do that just to save on on buttons. There. There we go. Alright, let's make our own test for command. So when test for at a um I just lost my chain of thought. <laughs> score underscore uh demo clock equals one score underscore demo clock minimum is whoops minimum is one so testing for that when that is true this will give an output as you can see it's not true so it doesn't give an output we press this button here and now we have an output we have a redstone output because the variable is true. We press this again. As you can see it's off. So that that's our test for command. It basically tests for a variable. If the variable is true it gives an output. A signal strength of 1 which is why I've got these repeaters here um, or have these connected straight into their output. Um, but yeah Fair, easily enough, uh, that's how we do it. Let's put this back to 1 and show you one more time with the repeater. So now we press this button. That repeater is on. You can see there is power being transmitted. And the, because the test for command is seen as true. Now we set this back to 0. Press the button again. And it's off. So that is the test for command. Now, when when used at the end of a clock, um, because it needs to be updated, like 
the test for command doesn't just update itself, it has to actually receive a redstone update, which is why you have clocks uh, here and here. Um, these here are testing for uh, demo with a value of 1. So only when demo has a value of 1, these are giving an output. And that's how this here works. When demo is 1, it goes to the first value, and when demo is 2, it goes to the second, and when demo is 3, it goes to the third. So score demo 1, score demo minimum of 1. That's very simple. Nothing overly elaborate about that. Now, what is interesting about the whole needing a redstone update is, as you notice here, this one is set to blue, which is that one, which is set to 1, but this one is set to 2. This one has not received a redstone update. Now, what is interesting about that is, if you notice over here on the screen, that is how I accomplished that. That is how I accomplished having multiple letters using the same... Um, character selection method, uh, the same memory storage, and are able to write an entire word with uh, limited redstone, really. Um, this here is just decoding for all the different letters, and uh, not necessarily individual memory storage, but this letters are stored on the screen because they're not being updated. Excuse me. So let me show you what happens when they are updated. That is now on. Now, I've given these command blocks here at the end an identity of A. We've set another uh, objective, which is A. Now, I've got a lot of objectives for my keyboard that are a simple two or three letter words, just to make it easy to, to do. So like, and you'd probably do the same if you were making larger redstone constructions. And the reason being that you're going to write them a lot. <laughs> and it makes it a lot easier if you're writing um, shorter characters rather than demo clock or demo or, or I don't know, Rumpelstiltskin or whatever, uh, to have short variables. Because this has got a value of 1, this has got a value of 2, and this has got a value of 0. That's basically how it's working. There's three different... Um, variance to what can happen. So if we set it to green uh, and then press this, we've now got a, a plus. So what I've basically done, very simple redstoning, when this is uh, has a minimum of 2 and when this uh, uh, score is minimum uh, has 2 or is a minimum of 2 and this one just needs a minimum of 1. So this is on for both um, for both of the things. So, yeah, this middle one will be on for both that one and that one, as opposed to these ones, which are only on when it's red, which you will see here. All three of them are on, and green again, only the middle one is on. So you can do some pretty cool stuff with that. Um, what I, the easiest way to go around it, what I did, was I had a 2x2 two two section as a pixel. And there are 25 pixels per screen. Um, the numbers are range from, range from uh, 1A to 25A. And basically, I've got, rather than one command block, a series of command blocks, which is what this memory uh, slot over here is. Let me give you a quick look at that. Um, just so you can get an idea and, and use this for your own redstoning. Uh, so basically, 1A is set to 0, 2A is set to 0, 3A... So these are the different pixels. I've given the different pixels um, a redstone update, and so they have a value of 1 or 0. In this case, 1 is off and, two, and 0 is on, um, because, they're u because I've used redstone torches on the backs of these. So... But yeah, otherwise it would be the other way around. And these test f the these just basically test for a, 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 z a 1 signal. If it's a 1, they'll be on, which will turn off the torch. If it's a 0, then they won't be on. That's all that it is. And so basically, it's kind of like binary in that way, because it's testing for 1s and 0s, um, and it's looking for either on or off signals. Um, yeah, oh yeah, and to talk about memory... Oh, before we go on to that. Now this clock here, um, how this, why this is so essential to, to realise or to recognise 
uh, is because demo clock can have multiple variables. We could have it uh, have up to nine or fifty or whatever. This screen here, as I have it, I could have made this infinitely long and not had to add any redstone. And I'm not even joking. If I had simply added more display screens uh, and just done them exactly how I've done them, I could have added infinitely large um, displays and added what continued to write uh, characters on them and so forth. The reason that is so is because these here, this one command block, that's all that is required. Um, these command blocks are the, the ones that update the redstone. Uh, as you can see, the one at the end is the one receiving updates um, because that is the character we are up to. Right now, the character we're up to is number 7. So if we were to increment to the next character, it would be character 8, and character 9, character 10, etc. So we can effectively and theoretically um, make an endlessly large keyboard using exactly the same method I've used um, without any additional redstone other than the, the stuff behind the screen here sort of thing. So like if we just made more mem uh, screen cells like I've done and just made them go on... Uh, and on and on and on, we can make this infinitely long. Now, that's the same is true for this one. Um, these clocks here are not receiving an update. It's the same as this here. We could have more of these, and I actually intend to make a few games with this concept in mind, um, because this clock here is not receiving an update. So if we turn off what's, re what's updating this clock, if we were to increment this to a new variable, let's say red, and then red here, that does not change until the clock gets updated and then it changes as you can see and that's why for example when we go to the next character it, it repeats the same character from the previous uh, the previous uh, pixel or uh, screen and then you change it so yeah just a few things to take into account I'll put all the syntax into the description so you can um, copy it, paste it, play with it, whatever, um, just so you, to help you to learn it as well. But in the meantime, um, hope you've learned something from this. Hope you can uh, use this in your own redstoning. This is going to change a lot of things uh, in terms of the ability to to, to manipulate um, redstone in the future. And I think most of redstone as we know it will change as a result of command blocks. Uh, but thank you so much for all your support. Um, you guys are awesome, and uh, I'll catch you like catch you later. See ya. Got a little Swedish there. there. Yeah.